Guys and gals, we're back here in Bob's Barn Workshop for another great riveting video. <laughs> Today I'm going to lift that monster back off. Uh, my parts came from Go Power Sports. I got a whole box of goodies in here, including a new carb upgrade kit, the header. I got the uh, new brake caliper, new chain. So I'm going to have to deal with all that first. But I see I need to mount the engine before I can mess with the chain. And my engine mount and shocks is coming in another order in a couple days. So we'll put all the new shocks on then, and I'll figure out what kind of steel I need to go buy to mount the motor plate. But for right now, we'll pull that off. We'll get the brakes fixed. We'll put the carb kit on it. We'll put the header on it. I can't put the header on until it's on the cart because it sticks out this way, and I won't be able to drop it in. So all right. Let's get that done. So I'll show as much of this as I can. I'm just lifting that piece of a torque converter off here. Torque converter slash CVT, whatever you want to call it. Constant velocity transmission. And hopefully you'll be able to see me get this beast out of here. If I don't break my back doing it. It's a big one. And, uh, Oh, she's heavy. You see, the other guys have two hands on these. I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here. Oh, girl. There we go. I certainly don't want to drop her. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Uh, it is a beast. All right, but... Now we can work on that carb kit. All right, let's take you over there. I'm not real sure if I'm going to have to cut one of these studs off a little shorter. Yeah, I think I am. Because it's going to hit. Yeah, she hits just a bit. I'm going to have to cut her off about a half inch or so. That's how the header is going to look sticking out of there. Ha ha ha. As Easy Top once said. And I have my new carb uh, uh, velocity stack basically is what it is. And that goes on here. You got to make sure you don't block these little ports. And that one does, so I don't know exactly what. I've heard guys say you need to open that vent up or have a thicker gasket. We can try it. It wasn't included in the kit. That's why I worry. And uh, where'd my nuts go? Great. I'm guessing the nuts for that are over in the air box. I hope. Well, there's two nuts in there. Two nuts are always good. Those appear to be the correct ones. See, I think that one port for the idle is supposed to have a little... I don't know why they didn't... If it's not important, why wouldn't they... Uh, or, I mean, if it's that important, why wouldn't Go Power Sports include that? That's what... Makes me think that we don't need to unblock it for what we're doing. I well, just don't know. And then they supplied the little uh, 
hold down kit for the choke lever. And then I got a purdy blue air cleaner to go on this. Filter. Just like so. To match my blue engine. What do you think? All right, well, that's all I'm, I think I'm going to put this stuff on after I get the motor mounted anyway. But yeah, I definitely got to cut that stud off about half an inch. And what I'll do is I'll put a nut on the stud. Remember this, kids. Put a nut on the studs so that when you back it off, you can straighten the threads out. So let me reiterate that again. I'm going to cut this off with a little whiz wheel, but it's going to booger up the end of the threads. So we'll take a file and hit it, and then we'll back the, the nut off, and that'll straighten the threads out for us. So remember whenever you're going to cut a bolt or anything like that to put a nut on it. All right, that's a little bit of okay, pause for so now. I did get this bearing just hung on there finger tight. attempt clean all the oil off this with a rag with a, some alcohol on it some 90% alcohol nitrous I just want to get this crap off before I hit it with my little wire brush. Doesn't really seem that bad. And I need a small wire brush to be able to reach in there. I'm just going to blast the rust off the disc before I put the disc brake on, that's all. side there. I think I can get my zippy tool right up in there. Somewhere here. I dropped the brush. Yeah, there it is. And That's all I'm doing. All right, she looks kind of shiny. I can edit some of this out. We'll take a clean patch on here now, and we'll clean with oil or clean with alcohol one more time. Those bearings feel really good. Right now, I'm not changing them because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to, and uh, I got new wheel bearings for the front. So now we're going to drop that shaft down in a little farther. I'm going to take the nuts and screws back out of it. And we're going to mount the caliper right up on that slide right there. And then we got to get a bolt in it, so let me get this taken apart. Well, my brake's going to be upside down because it has to mount on the rail this way, so I've just got to take these two bolts out and swap that pin and that lever around. So we're doing this together. I just loosened these nuts up over there in the vise and an open end wrench, or a box end wrench.
because there's something, this pin has to move here. That's the only reason we got to move this the other way. So I'm going to pull this, lift this off. Out comes the pucks and all kinds of crap. That was sitting on there. And that little button was sitting on the center like that. Now, I'm thinking that pin was pressed in. So I might have to drive that out with a punch. So I'm going to take the, the center thing out and I'm going to go over and put this on top of the vise and drive that out with a punch. Yeah, that pin easily pushed right out the bottom. Uh, as you can see, it's got like a spline shaft. So all I need to do is flip this over. That'll work. I should have done it before, but uh, after I drove that in, I put a drop of blue Loctite on there, and it's flowing all the way around that, and I'm sure it'll get down in that. All right, so how does this go back together? Um, this rounded guy is what drives on the, if you look at this, there's a groove in this arm that's like a cup and as you move it back and forth it pushes that pin in and out. So that's just how that works. And that part goes in there like so. And this one is glued in so that can't fall out. And that guy goes back together like so. And I'm going to use a little blue Loctite on these because we don't want nothing falling out. And then that'll give me my, my proper uh, motion on this. So I'm just gonna lock tight these a little bit. Okay, it's fun as usual. I got that other side one bolt out and hanging down by its ear, kinda. And there we go. I got it to slide over a little bit because it's just a little give over here. Now I gotta spread these shoes apart. There it goes. All right, I got one side in. Got the brakes in. Second attempt. Of course, it's blocked by all this stuff, so I can get my knee. I'm sitting on a box now. Maybe that'll help. Get my knee up under here. Get this. That's got a good Well, the bad news is they canceled the event that I was trying to get this go kart ready for, just because of this stupid virus thing. As that pulls in tight, that'll straighten that bolt and that'll lift that bearing up into the right position all by itself. And it's kind of caught in there like a clam between these two oval shaped plates with the recesses that hold that rounded bearing, which kind of moves like a heim joint. You know, it's got like a little curve to it, so it, its alignment doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Good, good. There's a little friction, but I'm sure it will 
Now, how you adjust these brakes is you just run this bar down until you feel the friction and it turns, but then when you push it, she bites. Perfect. And I'm sure that'll grind off any rust that's on there. jam knot that sets that in place so I'm just gonna tighten that baby up because there's play there but there's plenty of travel Alright, I got that quarter inch bolt in there through the clevis, which might be hard to see. Uh, I'm gonna put another one, double nut it, if I can get it on there. That's here we cut off, which we can use for mounting. I got tail lights. How about we put the tail lights on it? We put the tail lights right up here, or should they be up high? I think they should be down here. I don't know. I could put one here and one up there. I got a I got a uh, mount a tab, which I actually have this bar right here. I can cut tabs and weld them like so, like so. They're just uh, truck marker lights is all I got. What do you say we try and see if I brought the right chain? The chain is supposed to have a master link. Yep, I see it. Right. Somehow I ripped this greasy little bag. There we go. I just want to lay it over the sprocket teeth and see if it's the right size. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh yeah, I think we got lucky. I bought a five foot piece of brand new chain. Um, the sprocket runs nice and true too. I've been looking at this. It runs just as true as anything. So that's another good thing. Uh, of course, I can't measure the 420 until I... Uh, Actually, I can't take it apart and measure it until we got the engine mount of where we want it. And then we're, my slide of plate is coming, and I may be able to just cut this off and put it right on top of here. That would be good. It's an awful powerful engine, though. I was thinking I needed something stronger. There's the master link. All right, all right. So, you know, don't forget to wash your hands. Ha ha ha. As they all say, we all wash our hands all the time, don't we? Okay, you guys have seen people change the jet a million times. The jet's this little guy right here. You gotta take the bowl off the bottom of the carburetor, 10 millimeter nut. You take a fine screwdriver, go up into the jet, screw the old one out. The emulsion tube will fall out. The flat side goes against the Top of the new jet, you slide everything back up and tighten it up. Not a biggie. So, that guy is tight. I need to put the stack on here, which I set aside here somewhere. It's right in front of me. Duh, it's right in front of me. That just needs to be tightened. I have my thin wall socket here. I'm not going to reef the heck out of this. Just until I feel comfortable with it. And I'm thinking we need to try to do a test start on this. What do you guys think? 
Um, this is my uh, vent kit. One goes right on here for the tank, and uh, the other red shim goes inside of this tube, which will point it down out of the way here. Shove it in there, and it'll be over here out of the way. But we don't need to do anything with it right now for a test flare. The fuel line is on and off. There's the choke. Choke on, choke off. Choke on, choke off. I'm going to have to bolt this down or something to try to hold it in place because I don't want it taken off on me. And it's going to be louder than hell because I, I did get the muffler on or the header pipe. I took the other stud out here by double nutting it like I showed you on some of these other projects. Double nut that stud. I pulled that stud out, put it in the vise, cut off a half inch. I had to stack some washers because the shoulder of the threaded bolt was uh, too far out and the nut ran into the threaded part or the unthreaded part so I had to stack some washers. I don't know what this prong is sticking out here for. I guess maybe if you put a muffler on it you need to reinforce it. I, I had to bend it out of the way so I could get those one on with a half inch wrench. So those are actually US bolts. So there you go. Um, I got some C clamps around here. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this. Cause I gotta be able to pull on it. I can C clamp this thing down to the floor right here just for a test fire. Test and purposes only. I don't want to run my arm into anything and hit it either, of course, which I will. I brought a bunch of tools out from the house. So I thought I'd use for this project. Which happens to include a couple seat clamps. So I am gonna have a C clamp on right here. And I'll put one on the other side. And I've got to go get some fuel. I really want to use good 90. Uh, ethanol free stuff in this but well, I'll use what I got right now for a test fire and then we'll run this guy right on here this is gonna be loud we're gonna put our earmuffs on and we're gonna open the door because it's gonna have oh shoot I gotta put oil in it I don't have oil okay so I guess we're not doing that right now alrighty break time shall I figure out what we're doing Hey guys, here's a super idea I just came up with. I had the half of a blue plastic barrel. And I got thinking about how am I going to make fenders for this thing. And I saw a guy cutting it into strips and everything. But then I thought, well, hey, I cut the bottom right in half. I just followed the seams where it was molded so I knew it would be cut right in half perfectly, right? And it's that really nice stiff plastic. And all I gotta do is weld a couple of bars up from my frame here. And look at that, they're just almost exactly the right size for those tires. That should keep all the mud from flying on, up on me. I mean, I suppose you could tilt them and put them up here like this, but then when the wheel comes up, it's gonna hit. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put them almost horizontal and uh, they'll be perfect. And of course I got a barrel so I got two of them because the barrel is too, you know, and uh, all the support I need. This is so stiff that all I'm going to need is support through the back. This wangles a little bit, I don't care. And I think maybe I can uh, spray paint them to match. 
<laughs> wow, that's just like the coolest thing I ever saw. I gotta sandblast these wheels or something, get some paint on. I don't know why they would paint them white. My engine is blue, a lot darker blue. Maybe I'll just paint these blue. My wife wanted me to do a yellow frame and blue trim, but for right now, I might just get it working. As I said, uh, the, the event we were gonna go play at is uh, canceled for now. It's just waiting to be rescheduled. So anyway, anywho. That beast's all ready to test fire. I gotta go find some fuel and oil. All right guys. All right, we had a few minutes there and uh, I just took and went ahead and uh, I cut off this breather pipe I hooked up the little breather kit that they gave me. They give you an extra piece of pipe that'll fit inside of that and a larger breather. And then onto the fuel line, a little fuel tank breather here. So uh, it lets a little air move in so that your fuel can flow and such and you don't build up pressure in your crankcase. And you won't let dirt in. And uh, so that's pretty much all the rest of that. That's what I did in the meantime. Well, I didn't film all this, but... Uh, just welding. I found some of this channel that had holes in it and believe it or not the spacing was perfect for my uh, my lights. So I cut off a four inch piece and welded it on the frame on both sides. So I'm gonna have my tail lights up here and I ordered two uh, that one's still hot I didn't put it on yet. I ordered two different headlights LED headlights to go on these brackets when the time comes. And they're kind of long and flat, so there'll be one here and there'll be one here. And it's a little smoky in here. I've been welding and grinding. <laughs> so, i got to get some metal and stuff, too. I'm going to put some, uh, obviously, put some uh, blue Loctite on these when I get to fix them. They're not on there for good. They're just there temporary. I'm a horrible welder, and I've got a horrible welder, so uh, I'm not blaming my tools, but it is pretty crappy. All right. <gasps>